The next one is both. Let's just start by reading the definition. So both is a function which calls the two provided functions and returns the and and like the logical and or the result of logical and of the results uh, ah, of the results of the two provided functions. It returns the result of the first function if it is falsy and results of the second function otherwise. Note that this is short circuited, meaning that the second function will not be invoked if the first one returns a faulty value, right? So what they're trying to say is that don't put things with side effects in uh, these functions, or I mean, more specifically, don't put things with side effects in the second function and expect these side effects to happen. <laughs> I guess as, as always stick to sort of pureish functions. In addition to functions, r.both also accepts any fantasy land comp compatible applicative functor, right? So again, as I mentioned before, this we'll talk about in some, some other future video. I'm actually thinking about doing a series specifically on, on fantasy land. So, so let me know if you find that interesting and then I can dig more into that. But anyways, uh, let's dig into this. Uh, initially, I'm thinking, what's the difference between this function both? I mean, we've seen something, I guess it was, what was it called, and? Right, because we've talked about A's, we did talk about and, right? So and is also binary, right? like its arity is binary, and it returns true if both of the arguments are true and false otherwise, right? But, but think about this, here there are no functions. So like you pass true and true and you get true, you pass true and false and you get false. And actually something that I'm thinking about now, let's just, let's just establish that before we move any further. Uh, I mean, if you say and uh, true and true, let me close this and look at that. And we get true, of course, right? But is it truthy or is it actually like true? So like if we pass one here, does that, whoa, that gives us one. Hmm. And if we pass one and true, that gives us true. Okay, so sorry, this is probably, let's jump into the node. I mean, this is probably because the weirdness of JavaScript, like what is true and one? That's true, but what is one and true? That's true. Okay, so it's not because of the weirdness of JavaScript actually. So true, did we try anything else? Like, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm doing the wrong thing, sorry. It's, it's not true equals equals one. It's true and and one. Ah, that's one, right? So it's because of the weirdness of JavaScript. And then one and and true. Uh, is true, right? So don't ask me why that is. There's probably a bazillion weird reasons. Maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't. But that, that's the reason why we get true when we do this and then <laughs> one when we do that. But so anyways, well, what I wanted to show is that and here is truthy, right? It's, it's not uh, strict truthness. I'm not sure, like, I can't remember what's truth, but like, oh, sorry, I don't mean what's truth, but, 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 but what is truthy? Like, does that... So does this mean true or not, right? Like foo and true. Yeah, that's true. So probably it was the same sort of weirdness again, where if I said foo and true, we get true. But if I say true and foo, we, we get foo. But it's probably truthy. So like if I do r and of uh, this thing and true, then we get true, yeah. So it's so it's truthy, right? Um, but anyways, this is right. This is a, a sidetrack. Let, let, let's jump back. This, we are now at and, but we were talking about what were we talking about? Something on B, binary bind, both. Uh, binary bind uh, both we were talking about right so so I'm thinking what's the difference here right because both seems like something very similar but the difference is that we have two provided functions and not two provided values like if we jump back to and here think about this we have true and true here without applying uh, the, these things to anything like the, we just have two values where these values are either true or false but here in both we actually have functions so in their example here where, where they do art of both they, they pass uh, this thing called GT 10 and this uh, other thing called called LT20, right? And these are two functions that they've constructed using R dot greater than and R dot less than, which in, in short form is expressed as GT and LT. And then they use this uh, flip thing or, or this uh, underscore underscore thing where they can change the order of the partial application, which we've talked about in previous videos. And then when, when they when they do this both thing, they construct a new function, right? They, this, this is why they call it F here, or they store the result of calling R dot both on greater than 10 and less than 20, uh, and then they store the result in this variable that they call f to, to indicate that it's a function and then they can apply f to different values and as they, if they apply it to 15 they get true and if they apply it to 30 they get false right because they get true here because 15 is uh, greater than 10 
and less than 20, which is specified in this both thing, right? Where they're saying both, well, actually, I just realized they said C also and here, by the way, so, <laughs> so but, but anyways. So, so they get true because both of these are true. It's logical and over the result of applying both of these functions to the value that we've passed. So, so, so it's a binary function, like it's arity, it's binary, where you pass it two functions, and then you pass a value, and then you, that value is passed or funneled through these two functions, and if both of these things, uh, the return by these two functions are truthy, then the whole expression, not, not all the, the, the whole function application it, it, it returns true, or returns something, again, like uh, probably truthy. So, so, so I mean, let's, let's, before we go any further, let's, let's just think about whether we could actually like trivially implement this. Like both is probably, so, so think about it, it takes a function one and then it takes a, so let's do it this way, function one and a function two, and then it takes some x. And what we're saying is that we say, okay, uh, uh, function one applied to x and and function two applied to x. This is sort of what we're doing, right? Again, and like their implementation is probably something like that. So, so, and, and then let's just try this out. Let's try our version first. So both, yeah, let's actually use exactly their example. So, so let's just steal this, right? So we're saying r dot greater than uh, r dot, I can actually use r dot flip, right? r dot flip, r dot greater than 10, uh, and then r dot flip, r dot uh, less than uh, 20. Right, and then we pass the value and the value, well, let's try 15. Actually, let's construct a function first, right? So let's copy this stuff and say f here, and then say const f is equal to, right? So we construct a function first, and then we apply, oh, sorry, and then we need the partial applications, and then we need this x as a separate argument. So passing to these two functions returns us something, or returns us a new function that accepts an x, uh, and then when we give that x, we, we apply these two functions to, to the x and do logical and over the results. Ah, so sorry, I messed, it, I messed up the copying here. Of course, we here need to say both of, of these two, and then we console log f of 15, right? So, so we say both of, actually, let me split the lines here to make it a bit more clear. Uh, Right, so we have a, so so we have the function f, which is the result of running both on these two arguments, where the first argument is uh, the f the flipped version of greater than ten, and the second argument is the flipped version of less than twenty. So let's just console log this and see what we get. So we get false here when we had fifteen, and let's just do another one with thirty as they're doing, and then we still get false actually. So I messed this up. Hmm, interesting. So maybe uh, before I think about this any f further, let's just make sure that it's not because of this right so if I do if I do it this way instead so r dot less than uh, r dot greater than oh sorry, sorry underscore underscore 20 uh, like so yeah okay so I'm, I messed up flip or like why doesn't flip work that way let's just so I, let's just quickly look at this so I stop saying incorrect things about flip so like flip returns a new function much like the supplied one except that the first two arguments order is reversed but isn't that exactly what we wanted like I was expecting r dot greater than r dot underscore underscore or let me, I mean let's think about it maybe this way so r dot subtract r dot underscore underscore 10 oh sorry 10 and then apply that to 20 let's look at that and if we don't do if we don't do the underscore underscore we have it in the other order but so I was expecting that uh, doing this r dot flip on r dot subtract 10 and then 20 would give us the same thing as the first example Ah, but it doesn't. Okay, so ah, because probably no first argument. Oi, oi, sorry, I, I messed up the calling here. So it's it's a flipping of subtract where we first pass ten uh, and then we pass twenty. Yeah, but it does give what we had first. So let's just undo backwards. Did I mess something up? Ah, okay, okay. So I I messed up the flipping, right? If I go back here. Uh, you can see I, I did the same mistake here as well. I flipped the result of invoking greater than and less than, but I, but I should have flipped it only like this. Now let's remove that and that, right? 
here of course and that works so, so sorry about that and I mean now we have true first and then we have false because we're correctly using flip but I mean it doesn't matter this is tangential you could use flip or you could use this uh, let's go back here to both you could use this r dot underscore underscore and of course I mean <laughs> this has nothing to do with both this has to do with uh, the, the functions that you want to that, that you want to run so actually I mean if we would do something very similar we could just implement these to ourselves so let's say like greater than 10 we could just hard code them just to make it super simple like if we have a function that's called gt10 so greater than 10 10, and when given an x, it just asks whether that x is greater than 10. And then we have another function which is less than 20. And when given an x, it just asks whether that x is less than 20, right? Like, uh, then we can say uh, f is the function of doing both greater than 10 and less than 20, right? Now, now we're hard coding it just, just to make it clear, like, what's actually a part of both. So then that's the same thing that we get true and false. But of course, sorry, now we've been using our own implementation of both. Clearly their implementation is probably a bit more sophisticated, especially because they have this uh, fantasy land compatible or like it accepts uh, fantasy land comp compatible applicative functors. But anyway, so let's, let's exchange our fake implementation for their implementation. So instead of saying both here, we just say, probably we can just switch this R dot both then we run this again. Yeah, and you can see this this works the same way. So like essentially that's their implementation, but they probably have some, I mean, they have some extra stuff with the currying and all that. But yeah, that's both. Uh, before we move forward, so let's just look at the, uh, the the signature, the type signature here. So it says that given a function that accepts, that's very adic and accepts any number of arguments of any type and returns a Boolean, and given a second function, which has the same type, right? Also a very adic function of where the arguments are, are, are of some type here, and, and it returns a Boolean, then you will get back Back a new function that accepts any number of arguments of, uh, of any type or of this star type. I mean, presumably these should be the same type or the stars here should be referred to the same types. And then you get back a Boolean. So actually, I mean, this we didn't talk about, but if you think about it, they're, the, they're saying the functions are very adic. So, so here we're, oops. So here we're passing 15 and 30. So we're just passing a single argument, but, but we could actually pass uh, multiple arguments uh, this, of course, d doesn't matter here because the functions that we're looking at only accept a single argument. But the point is that if we didn't just have x here, but we also had, uh, let's say, y, then we could still use 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 both here. Like th that's why they're saying star dot dot dot. So so like if if the functions that we both over <laughs> or the function the functions that we want to apply the data to uh, accept multiple arguments or have a hi arity higher than uh, than one, then we can still uh, use both to produce a new function which, which has uh, an arity higher than higher than one. So let's just do something silly. Like I mean this is this is completely nonsensical and you could do this in much more elegant ways. But we're just doing this in order to try this out, right? So so let's say that the greater than 10 function and ands and says that, okay, both x needs to be greater than 10 and y needs to be greater than 10, right? And, and, and same thing for, for less than here. So we say that, so say that, okay, x needs to be less than 20 and y needs to be less than 20, right? And let's look at that, right? So, so now we get false, false here. And let's think about why. So, so the first one is false because yes, 15 is uh, greater than 10 and uh, less than 20. But 20 here is yes, greater than 10, but not at less than 20. So if we change this for 19, then we're back to having like the first one true and the second one false. And the second one remains false because, I mean, clearly it was false from the beginning. So, so it just remained false. But even now, if we make the first one pass, right? Like if this becomes uh, 15, then, then this would this would fail because of the second argument. But again, then we had the, the same scenario as we had on this line before. But anyways, <laughs> so so it's pretty useful. Again, like there are some trade-offs with this this whole notion of having uh, functions of of a higher arity than than one. Like if you think about Haskell, for example. So in Haskell, if I'm not mistaken, like all functions are curried by default. So all functions have an arity of one, and so like there is no notion of a function that has an arity of more than one. You just uh, apply an argument, or you apply a function to an argument and get back a new function that expects the next parameter, and so forth and so forth and so forth. And until you've supplied all of the arguments and your function can actually be invoked. But of course, I mean, it's like, in, it, it's invoked all the time or it's in, invoked throughout that chain. But but anyways, but, but um, because in Ramda they've decided to support different arities, there there are some trade-offs. So, so yes, you have this power, but this also causes some complications in other scenarios. For example, with the converge function. So hopefully I'll, uh, so I'll try and remember to mention that when we get to converge. <laughs> but anyways, that is is both. Now to the next function.